I think the best way to sum up what this show is about is by using the words of the great philosopher Al Yankovic. And it goes like this. Everything you know is wrong. Black is white, up is down, and short is long. And everything you thought was just so important doesn't matter. Everything you know is wrong. Hmm. Tastes like knowledge. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to an all new Cross and Streams. As always, I am your host, the real Gino, Gino Reynolds. And today, we're going to be talking about the Amazon Prime show, Good Omens. Um, what this show is about, uh, it's about the end of the world. And you have... An angel and a demon who have been working mankind uh, and since the very beginning. And they end up becoming friends and they want to stop the great plan of the world ending. Of They want to stop hell from destroying the earth and they want to stop heaven from destroying the earth. They think that the earth is worth saving. So that's what... Uh, the show is ma- is mainly about. And then also, uh, they have been watching the Antichrist grow up uh, for 11 years. Or at least, they think they have been. Uh, let's get this out of the way first. Um, I know there's been some religious groups out there that want this show to be taken down. They went so far and have been so bold as to tell Netflix to take down this Amazon show. Um, (laughs) Look, I just look at it this way. I look at this show the way I looked at Dogma. It's just having a little fun with the source material. You know, I know... I, I don't disrespect anybody's religion. But you also have to be able to laugh at yourselves a little bit. Um, yeah, it's, it's taking the entire story, uh, from the Bible and just kind of flipping it around and, and all that, but it's not being hateful. It's not being, it's not, it's not trying to show malice. It's just having a good time. Um, the best quote I, uh, would use for this was at the beginning of dogma and I don't know if it's Kevin Smith's original quote, or if he got it from somewhere, but, uh, he said, remember, even God has a sense of humor. Just look at the platypus. Um, you just have to, if you don't like what this show is offering story-wise, don't watch it. It's as easy as that. And me, I just know that it's having a little fun with the source material. I've read the Bible a few times already. Uh, I, I lost count, to be honest, how many times I've read through the Bible. Uh, I used to be a little more closer to God uh, in my life. Um, but that's been a long time ago, and I've, 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 be, I've, I look at the world a lot differently now than I used to. We'll just say that. Um, so I, when, when, when something like this or dogma comes out, I look at it like they're just having fun with the source material. And that's exactly what this show is doing. Um, What I like about the show is the acting. Uh, David Tennant as Crowley and Michael Sheen as uh, Aziraphale. I was afraid I was going to say that wrong. I like their chemistry a lot. And uh, I just like that they show throughout the six episodes that were given that these two characters have known each other since the beginning and they end up, they end up kind of teaming up, uh, throughout history. And there is an episode that kind of shows how they've helped each other throughout history. And I really liked that. And I thought they had a lot of great chemistry together and they just, they worked really well together. David Tennant's Crowley definitely likes the, the, uh, he, he likes the, the things about Earth. He likes the the earthly pleasures. 
uh, from the, a little bit of the darker side where Michael Sheen likes the earthly pleasures such as like food and books and stuff uh, from the not so uh, dark side of the earth. And they kind of, they, they kind of find a common ground uh, to want to stop the end of the world. Um, the whole thing is set up when Crowley delivers the Antichrist uh, to this uh, this satanic uh, like the satanic ministry and the babies get switched up there's like three babies and they all get switched up still don't know what happened to that third baby and they do, they I have a feeling that third baby's gonna come into play if this show gets to continue so the babies get mixed up so uh, the two or the angel and the demon are watching the wrong child they're watching uh, the kid they got switched they, the kid they think is the Antichrist for 11 years while the Antichrist is growing up uh, with another family and they go through again they go through history show you a few things out of the 11 years but then they get to the point where the earth is supposed to go through Armageddon and they keep counting it down days and hours and stuff like that throughout the series and they show uh the antichrist coming into his power and those parts get to get a little weird because while i like what they did with it they start having him uh learn some things uh from a witch and that's another uh another plot uh that's set up in the show where there's witches and uh witch hunters um and this witch that is that's introduced the in the, the story she meets the kid and teaches him a few things and he's like man i wish this stuff was real and it's a bunch of weird stuff like the kraken and things like that and you go all of a sudden this stuff starts happening because he has power he just doesn't know it uh it gets a little weird though because when he's with his friends he starts to really start to show his power and though i liked what they did it was just it kind of came a little quick again they only had six episodes though so they didn't have a ton of time to set it up uh but i do like that uh the antichrist uh ends up getting to kind of make his own choices he doesn't have to go with the devil's plan um i like what they did with both angels and demons uh they're very we're on our plan. We have no doubts, um, whether it be from the good or the bad side. Um, I just, I like that John Hamm is Gabriel and he's just really, I don't want to say stupid, but he's really narrow minded when it comes to things. And he's kind of the leader of, uh, of the, uh, angelic group. Um, I love what they did with the four horsemen, uh, especially death, Brian Cox voicing, uh, this skeleton face death is really cool. Um, I didn't like that they changed, uh, pestilence to pollution cause it didn't really make sense uh, because, okay, the four horsemen were created for this purpose, right? But then they mentioned that pestilence retired. It's like, well, if they know when the end is, wouldn't they know that they were going to be there for that? They, they wanted to have a whole pollution message in the show, and that's fine. But it just, it, did, it was weird how it worked out because it's like, well, pestilence retired, so now we have pollution. And I think they should have kept pestilence. It just, I don't know why it was switched. Uh, but I still, I did like what they did with the Four Horsemen, um, especially Brian Cox's death. Um, as for the story as a whole, for the most part, I enjoyed the whole journey. Again, there was a few things that felt rushed, uh, like the Antichrist coming into his power. I love what they did, uh, with his dog. Um, he's supposed to get a hellhound, uh, and it goes to him and he's, the kid has always wanted a dog and what they do with it's kind of funny. And I think they're going to do some more with the dog later because, uh, the dog is supposed to. Uh, protect him no matter what and everything and i have a feeling they're going to do more with the dog later um the witch story um uh, i'm not going to say it's the weakest part of the show but i'm not really sure where they're going to go with that part 
uh, because it's kind of its own little story. It does fit in to uh, the main story, but it just, I don't know. Anytime it went to the witches story and the witch hunter story and stuff like that, I was just, okay. It, it was still a fine part of the show, but I was definitely more interested in the angels and demons stories. Um, I love what they do with things like holy water, uh, where it can wipe demons off from existence and it just kind of poofs them into nothing. Um, I, I like just what they did with little things here and there. Uh, they have this whole thing about a flaming sword where, uh, Aziraphale was given a flaming sword at the beginning of time. Uh, and he gave it to Adam, uh, so he could protect himself after being cast out of the garden of Eden. And that's kind of starts him on his, uh, his empathy for humanity. And then again, Crowley kind of learns his humanity just by enjoying, uh, what the earth has to offer. Um, I love that Francis McDormand is God. Uh, you don't ever see her, at least in this season. Um, but you do, uh, hear her voice. She narrates the show. And I love at the first, it was just like, by the way, everything you know about this world is it's, you, you know, nothing. It's like some people got close to guessing when the earth came into existence and all this. And it's like, but they missed it by this many days or something like that. Um, and I really liked what they did with that. I think I kind of know where the show is going. Uh, if they get to continue, um, because they keep talking about God's plan, God's plan. And I have a feeling that the angels are going to their narrow mindedness, uh, of following God's plan is going to lead to God's real plan, uh, which is to, uh, you know, make the earth just a better place, um, because it is God's creation. Um, so I'm real, I am looking forward to seeing if they get another season all in all. Again, I know some people don't like the message of this show and me for me again it's just them having a little fun with the source material i think they did some things in this show just to poke the bear a little bit uh and i'm fine with that because i think they knew there would be certain groups that would overreact to this uh to overreact to this show and i think they were just like well we're gonna do this because we know it'll it'll just raise their ire a little bit me i enjoyed the show I won't say I loved it, but I did really enjoy it, and I would recommend it if you have Amazon Prime, and you can have a little bit of sense of humor about the source material. That's going to be all for this edition of Cross and Streams. If you like what you've heard here, please subscribe to the Real Geno YouTube channel, like this video, and if you have anything to say about Good Omens, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Until next time, I'm your host, the Real Geno, Geno Reynolds. See you later.